Uh, James in Tempe, Arizona. Hey, James, thanks for listening to 1480 AM. What's up? Oh, not much, Tom. Thank you very much for taking my call. Sure. Um, I just want to thank you for incorporating the uh, indigenous perspective into your talking points and how I think that hopefully educates the masses of people in the United States. Um, as you know, we have a profound history of dealing with the federal government, so we have, a, I guess, a firm understanding of of when you talk with a sport tongue, so to say. Mm. You, uh, but you say we, James. I'm assuming you, you're a Native American yourself. I am. Do you? Can you give me an? Uh, since you're in Arizona, I've been. Uh, uh, it's it's kind of fallen off my radar screen in the last few weeks. We did a series of of television programs and a, and I think one or two radio programs on um, the the battle to to recover the Apache Tears area, the the the, the sacred tribal land of the of the uh, uh, San Carlos Apache uh, Indians that were, uh, that uh, Jeff Flake and, and uh, uh, John McCain basically, uh, you know, flipped ownership of so that a big Rio Tinto mining company could come in and rape the land. Uh, are, you, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? And can you tell me what the status of that is right now? I, I can't tell you the status and it, it'd be wrong of me to speak on behalf of that indigenous community, but right. I do know the situation, and I do know that we have had a pattern of that within our history. You know, speaking of one of our senators, you talk about the um, uh, the uh, flipping of land. Um, one of our senators here has had a past history with the big Bokeas, um real estate deal that happened with the Navajo and the Hopi tribe, and it's recently been come to my attention um, that one of the, the parties to that actually came out and said that uh, uh, against Peter McDonald, the chairman of the tribe at that time, that uh, everything that he was accused against, that it uh, it really wasn't accurate. Mm. Um, but that is a history, and, and the other thing, um, you know, that I wanted to say is our own indigenous communities as people, uh, you know, we're still recovering um, from generational trauma, and I think a lot of our own people don't... Um, understand some of the things that have happened in our own history, past, and coming to present. Um, you bring in gaming and other things of that nature into our societies, and that also brings another element uh, into it that maybe we're not, I guess, as familiar with dealing with, and you have outside influence pressures that are always influencing tribal governments. And when you talk about uh, the big picture of when you're talking about our government as a larger uh, perspective from our nation, you talk about influence, um, changing, manipulating things um, in the indigenous community. It's just at a smaller level, but we do understand those things happen. And it's unfortunate that it does, that we let a few individuals, um, I guess, decide, make decisions mm. for us instead of what... Um, I guess you could say the founding fathers had, um, you know, um, their ideology was. Uh, it's not the best situation for us as indigenous people, but we understand as a conquered people that we live here in this country and um, we are patriotic. And uh, it's just it's just refreshing to hear someone that brings those stories to the table um, to help enlighten right. everyone. Louise and I spent our 25th wedding anniversary in, in the Hopi community on the third uh, Mesa. Um, uh, and there was a bit of a power struggle going on at that time between the basically the older generation and the younger generation. Uh, we have just a little less than a minute left, James, before we okay. hit a break. Do you have any uh, updates on what's going on with the Hopi right now? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, that was 20 years another... ago that we were there. No. Understand completely the, the, the Hopi. Uh, you know, if you look at it from from Arizona's perspective, out of the 22 federally recognized tribes that are here in the state, um, there, you know, uh, there's 17 that went into gaming, and Hopi th themselves decided that wasn't something they wanted to go into. And okay. you obviously understand the Hopi prophecies and things like yep. that, and their spices in, in indigenous communities, and they, uh, you know, chose not not to do that. So.
Um, like I said, I respect that completely. Like I said, each ind indigenous community is um, a distinct government on its own, has its own unique traditions, um, government. And, and James, you're work. listening to Tom Hartman. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. I'm sorry, James. We, we have hard breaks throughout the show. I have no control over them. I'm trying to get control of them. But thank you for the call, James. And, and very well said. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back.